So, Chaitanya Charitamrita starts with an invocation of uh, 17 verses, I think, in the first, the first verses of the, of the first chapter. And uh, a large part of the Adi Leela, the first part of Chaitanya Charitamrita, is an explanation of those verses. So, uh, these verses, they summarize uh, the whole subject matter of the Absolute Truth, uh, specifically in reference to the Yuga avatar for this age, namely Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, uh, uh, in this beginning of this chapter, um, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj, the, the author of the CC, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, he proposes to explain in this chapter the meaning of the third verse uh, of the out of the invocation, which is, excuse me, I said 17, it's the first 14 verses. So just to give you the context, I read that verse, and then we can talk a little more about, you know, the points that are make, made in the verse of today. This third verse of the invocation, it goes as follows, yat advaitam brahmupanisha aditad api asya tanu bha, yat atma tayami purusha itiso shamsa vibhavaha, Sat Aishvaryai Purno Yaiha Bhagavan Sasvayam Ayam Nathaitanya Krishna Jogati Paratatvam Param Iha. What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body, his, that is, Lord Chaitanya, and the Lord known as the Super Soul is but his localized plenary portion. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself. Yes, something is not working with the translation or? Yeah, doesn't work. Doesn't work. So, should we make it work before I continue or? <laughs> Should we just drop the whole thing? <laughs> I, I'd like to get this sorted out before I continue, because otherwise, too much distraction. Uh, why doesn't it work? Because uh, it's, I'm going too fast, or is it? Uh, what is the problem? Some other translator will take over. Is it sorted out or no it's not sorted out? You just give up. <laughs> I'd like to know because uh, you know, like I said, too much distraction otherwise. Mm. I could try to speak French, but there are a few non speaking French speaking people here I can see. You for sure don't speak French. You're from Germany, right? You speak English? Yeah, English? At least you understand English fairly okay. Okay? Good. And this gentleman. Okay, so uh, I continue in English. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I'll read the translation of the, this, the verse, in, not the verse of today, but the verse which the verse to, of today is a part of the explanation. So, what the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body, and the Lord known as the Super Soul is but his localized plenary portion. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself, full with six opulences. 
He is the absolute truth, and no other truth is greater than or equal to him. Hmm. So, uh, this is under discussion here, the three aspects or the three levels of realizing God or the Absolute Truth. Uh, levels are, of course, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Brahman refers to the bodily effulgence of the Lord, the all-pervading energy of the Lord, uh, which in which the whole uh, creation actually rests in a similar way as uh, the whole universe rests within the rays of the sunshine. Uh, the Paramatma, Paramatma is, Prabhupada called Paramatma, the localized aspect of, of, of Krishna, of the Absolute Truth. In other words, Paramatma is the form of the Lord in which he deals with the affairs of material creation. Mm. Mm. Uh, He's, anyway, we're getting into the details here, but Paramatma is specifically, he's also known as, you can say, Vishnu, the Vishnu manifestation of, of, of the Lord. And there are three, basically three Vishnus. There's the Maha Vishnu, there's, who is the source of the, 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 the all the ingredients of material creation, the Mahatattva, then there is uh, from whose pores all the universes emanate at the time of creation and in whose body all the universes enter back. Then there is uh, the further uh, expansion of Paramatma or Vishnu, Gabhadakasai Vishnu, who enters into each and every universe and lies down in the bottom of the universe, on the ocean of, uh, of uh, uh, Gabudaka, uh, and uh, from whose navel Lord Brahma is born, uh, who in turn becomes the, the creator of, you can say, the engineer. All the ingredients are supplied by the Lord, but Brahma puts it all together to establish all of the varieties of, of within it, each and every universe. And finally, there is the the Xirudaka um, Shoi Vishnu, who is uh, uh, enters into the heart of every living entity, and even in within each and every atom. who gives, as Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, uh, uh, he gives knowledge, remembrance, and also even forgetfulness to all of us. In other words, he makes us able, he enables us to go about uh, our affairs of trying to enjoy and exploit in this material world. And of course, the ultimate uh, manifestation of the Absolute Truth is Bhagavan, who is the Lord in his original form, who is behind all of this, uh, who is in the spiritual sky far beyond this material creation, where he enjoys life uh, free of the cares and anxieties that one might associate with having to deal with a material creation. Uh, so the transcendentalists, they successively realize the absolute truth in these three phases. Uh, 
this was a short summary. Uh, in this verse, particularly, uh, which is a quote from Bhagavatam, eleven six forty seven, it's explained the 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 uh, qualities or the uh, activities of the of the transcendentalists who realize the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth. In other words, they are actually beginners on the path of, of transcendental realization, even though uh, from our perspective they seem pretty advanced. Uh, they, they are uh, beyond uh, uh, even what we may feel that we we can uh, we can uh, have a, at least in our present state we we we, we are not we we couldn't imagine to to follow their example. Uh, of course, there are, it's become very popular in this age to to be naked, but uh, <laughs> that is uh, not <laughs> enough. <laughs> that doesn't, it's not, the, the point is not to be naked. <laughs> it's not that just by being naked you can realize the absolute truth, realize Brahman, the Brahman aspect. The point is that you have to become, as Prabhupada explained here, that uh, these mendicants, they do not care about anything material, including clothing, but they depend wholly on nature. Uh, uh, such sages do not cover their bodies, even in severe winter or scorching sunshine. Uh, they take great pains not to avoid any kind of bodily suffering, and they live by begging from door to door. So, uh, you know, being naked when the sun is shining, when it's nice, that we can do, but uh, to, uh, to be naked in, in, uh, in the scorching winter or in this now here, we had some hot sunny days, but especially in country like India, the, the sun can become so scorching that uh, uh, so many things going on. <laughs> anyway, I'll keep it short, don't worry. I can see that there are many things that <laughs> needs to be done. Uh, discussed. So, uh, yeah, even though, as I said, Brahman realization is, is uh, the first step in, in, in realizing uh, God or the Absolute Truth, still uh, the qualification actually even for attaining Brahman realization is very strict. And uh, hardly anyone of us uh, would be able to practice like it is described here. Uh, uh, at the same time, we should try. <laughs> at least the principles we should understand and we should try to uh, develop the same disinterest in everything material, the same. He uh, said that these sages, they take great pains to avoid any kind of bodily suffering. Not to, sorry, not to avoid any kind of material suffering. So, uh, sometimes it seems like they purposely inflict suffering on themselves. Actually, they do sometimes. 
They will go, not only is it freezing winter, but they will go and they will sit in ice cold water. They will go up in the Ganges, for instance, high up in, in, uh, in the Himalayas, where the Ganges comes out of the glacier. It's, it's like practically zero degrees, and they will go and sit in that cold, cold water up to the neck. Uh, for us, even just to take a short dip in that cold water is, uh, would probably kill us. Uh, I've been up there. Uh, for instance, if you go to Gangotri, uh, which is a little further down, but not so much further down from Gomuk, where the Ganges comes out of the glacier, um, the, the, the Hindus, they go there, and they take a bath there. And I, 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 I'll describe to you how, it, how, it, how they do it, because they are not such uh, yogis like this. But they are very devout, uh, 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 pious Hindus, so they, anyway, nonetheless, they do take a bath. But they do it in this way that uh, they, they have their whole family with them. And uh, they go down to the, the ghat, next to the temple in, in Gangotri. And then they have the whole family stand around them and hold them in their arms. And they just go out in the Ganges. And they just go like this, down and up. <laughs> and actually, they don't go up. The family, they have to pull them out of the water. Because the water is so cold. You just immediately when, when you go down, you practically faint. So they have to, you know, the they, they, they family there, there, they pull them up half unconscious out of that ice cold water. And then they, they are ready, they, they stand there with the family, they're all ready because, you know, then they are prepared. They, they stand there with towels, and, and, and they are, it's, it's interesting to observe. They, all of them, they, you know, start rubbing them, you know, phonetically to, to just to bring, you know, blood back in, uh, to you know, bring them to, back to consciousness, to make the blood circulate again. And uh, this is how it is, uh, just to give you an idea uh, how difficult it is to, to practice such yoga. When I was up there, there was one uh, gentleman, he was standing uh, and, and watching this. I, he was a Westerner, so uh, he was just standing there completely, uh, completely baffled, you know. So anyway, uh, just out of curiosity, I walked up to him, asked him, where are you from? Uh, yeah, I'm from Spain. And. Uh, and uh, then uh, he said something to the effect that they are crazy, these Hindus. You know, look at this, you know, this is completely, why they do this? He was a professed atheist, and, 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 and he, he was just basically, you know, just amazed how, how, you know, people can be so crazy. They do such things, you know, almost killing themselves, bathing in this ice-cold water. But they, they, you know, they, the, 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 the Hindus who were bathing, they, they were quite blissful actually. After once their family had brought them back to consciousness, then they, Haribo! <laughs> it was, uh, clearly, they got something out of it, some some kind of happiness. Uh, so, uh, anyway. The real point here is that we don't have to do this. We don't have to purposely inflict suffering. The material nature is such that there is so much suffering that we automatically comes. And, and it would be fine if we can just learn to tolerate, just like Krishna says, it instructs all of the first instructions. And Bhagavad Gita, he tells Arjuna, Matra sparshas to count here, sitosh na sukha dukha da agama poinu nichas tamsti tiksha This material world 
It is such a place that happiness and distress comes and goes by its own accord, just like summer and winter seasons. Now we had a nice hot summer, uh, but it's soon over. We are already seeing, we are already feeling the signs. It's just now coming here after Jan Mastami that uh, summer is soon over. And then the winter is coming, and there is nothing we can do about it. We just have to accept it. So actually everything in this material world is like that. Uh, is happiness is there, but then distress is always also there. And they come one after the other. Uh, uh, it's, it's just the way it is. And we shouldn't be elated when things are going nicely, neither should we be too much disturbed when they are not going nicely. We should learn to tolerate both. That goes for the uh, those who are seeking to realize Brahman, but it also goes for devotees. Uh, we also need to learn to tolerate uh, all of the ups and downs, all of the sufferings and the enjoyments that come to us uh, automatically in the due course. Uh, this is uh, one of the prerequisites for realizing Brahman, but also realizing Krishna, uh, becoming Krishna conscious. Uh, that's one important thing that is point that is made here that applies to us too. Another another point, of course, which is also very important, is learning not to discharge samana uh, unnecessarily. Udvaretasa, uh, the way the 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 transcendentalists they do it is that they instead of allowing the samana to flow down. They learn the art of raising the semina through the spine up to the brain and thus giving nourishing, actually giving, as it is said here, uh, they become most intelligent and develop very sharp memories. Uh, this is an art which is uh, practically forgotten in this age. Uh, uh, but even though it's a uphill struggle, but we still we should take pains to try to learn to control the flow of seminar. Uh, uh, if we are sincere, if we endeavor with. Uh, intelligence, then Krishna will help. And we shall find that uh, this will be very helpful for our spiritual life and uh, therefore also for our, uh, our, our health, our peace of mind, uh, everything. Uh, 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 this is a big subject matter. But uh, mm, there are many, uh, how to say, many things that that can help in this endeavor if we take the trouble to uh, try to understand how how spiritual life is practiced, and uh, it's going against the material nature. The material nature is dictates that uh, there are so many, there are the six pushings which are described in the Upadishamrita, Vachu Vegam, Manu Sakroda Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udara Upashta Vegam, uh, the urge to speak all kinds of things, the uh, urge to just allow the mind to to spin around uh, and of course 
the urge to ah, become angry when there's when there's when our desires when our hopes for happiness are frustrated, and then there's there's the the, the urge to just just eat stuff the belly, you know, to eat any any or especially we are frustrated and and on Jamastami. After fasting a whole day, we, we, the urge to eat becomes very strong. But the problem is, you know, at midnight, after uh, fasting a whole day, the, you cannot eat very much. So if we cannot control that urge, that is, Janmastami sometimes becomes uh, frustration. We, we're hoping to eat a big feast, but you cannot at midnight, you know. The appetite is not working. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Jiva Vegam, Udara, Upashta Vegam, after, in a natural, as Prabhupada said, the tongue and the belly and the genitals, they are situated in a straight line. So it, you know, it comes one after the other. The urge to taste nice food stuff, the urge to stuff the belly, and then the urge to, you know, discharge semen. The pressure comes, the, this creates, when the belly is full, this creates pressure on the, on, on the, on the genitals and, and the, 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 the semen is pushed out like that. So uh, this is, we are always uh, uh, pushed in this way. Uh, just yesterday in the evening, <laughs> We were watching <laughs> our uh, the dog of the neighbor, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, he he was playing with a pillow on the on on the on the lawn of uh, the neighbor's garden, <laughs> and he was he was using in the lack of any member of uh, it was a he dog. And uh, there was no, you know, uh, plenty of dogs around, but uh, he's kept within the garden, so. And I don't know, I guess some of them are she-dogs, but at least he didn't have access to a she-dog very, very easily. So, but he was using that pillow <laughs> and trying to satisfy himself, <laughs> bringing the pillow into position and then <laughs> exercising his... <laughs> trying to relieve the itch, <laughs> observing him a little bit. So, so we are not alone. It's uh, all conditioned souls, all creatures in this world, they are subject to these six pushings. But human beings, we need to learn the art of controlling these pushings. Uh, that is... Uh, not a self-torture, but it's actually the, uh, you can say, the entrance to spiritual realization. Uh, spirit, self-realization and sense gratification are two opposites. We cannot attain any real knowledge, any real happiness, any success in life, unless we make a sincere effort to try to control these, these lower propensities. That is not uh, just because somebody said so. It's, it's simply a basic law of nature. Huh? And... Uh, Anyway, uh, we 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 should we should understand that actually, if we want to become happy, and uh, who doesn't, uh, then we need to. Then we should understand that these sense gratification. 
is actually which stands, what stands between us and our real happiness. It is not uh, the source of happiness, it's actually the source of suffering. As Krishna states it very frankly in Bhagavad Gita, Dukkha Yona. Uh, yona means it's like a womb. Uh, uh, so, so what Dukkha means suffering. So the womb from which suffering is born, what is that? That is the the samsparsaja, the contact of the senses with their objects. This uh, uh, Krishna explains. So um, we, 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 it's not that we can we we can stop the senses from engaging with their objects, but we should give up the idea that this is our source of happiness. We should understand that actually all suffering comes from not exactly the, the contact with the sense objects, but the engagement in acts of sense gratification with the idea that this will bring us enjoyment. It's actually the source of all suffering in this world. We can see this if if we have a, if we are a little sober. We can actually we can see this how how this is so. Uh, it's actually quite clear. Uh, why Krishna explains Adi Antavanta. Uh, they have a beginning and an end. Simply stated. Just simply because such pleasures have a beginning and an end, therefore they can never actually bring us real happiness. It's easy to see, uh, but uh, the nature of illusion is that it covers us over so that we, we don't see even the obvious. Uh, but associ- by associating with Devotees, by hearing from the scriptures, our intelligence becomes clear and we can see these things. And and, uh, and with such clear intelligence, we can actually make progress in spiritual life and become happy. Uh, Hare Krishna. So, <sighs> Bhagavati. <coughs> this, this lack of sense control, it, it, it seems like it's a root problem. It's a root problem in. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. Mm. And then, then the, the whole society is um, disrupted. Yeah. This modern society is a soul killing society, as Prabhupada said, because the whole purpose is simply to engage in acts of sense gratification and, 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 and more and more so, more and more spectacular because we don't, they, uh, sense gratification doesn't bring any satisfaction actually. So uh, it only brings frustration and, but because we have, a, we have, got, we have made a compromise with you know the, the 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 material energy or with Maya, therefore we do not understand this and we think that I have to develop the sense gratification more, more sophisticated, more uh, powerful forms of sense gratification. 
that is what I need, then I will be happy. And the whole modern society is like that. And, and uh, it's going to such extremes that, uh, you know, it becomes sheer madness. Everything is... The, 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 the madness is, is, you know, where is... One wonders where is, where is the limit. <laughs> And uh, I guess there is no limit, <laughs> but um, Krishna is very kind, and if we if we finally come to the point where we realize this is madness, and we actually also realize that we are helpless, actually. Even though one may see it as madness, but to get out of this madness, we need help. Uh, and uh, that we have to understand also. And who can help us? Only God, only Krishna. So the, we need to come to that point where we actually turn to Krishna and ask him, uh, ask him, uh, with some intensity, with some sincerity, that that he will kindly help us and pick us up from this this mire of material madness, which is this modern society. Uh, then he will help. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Krishna is in our hearts as we were just talking about. Uh, so he understands, and he's more than willing to help, but we have to ask him. Actually, that's all that is needed. We simply have to ask him sincerely for help. Then he, he's more than ready. Uh, even in this... Uh, there you this predicament of of kali yuga life that we have put ourselves into okay so we stop here hari krishna <coughs> Uh,